So, uh, as I mentioned, my, you know, the one that I'm talking about in particular is the business of innovation, law, and technology. So, like, why this one in particular? Uh, I think there's a few reasons. One of which is that Miami is a really, really exciting area for um, startups and entrepreneurship more generally. Which, you know, it doesn't have obviously the profile of like a place like Silicon Valley. Um, but that's, I think, part of the th one of the things that makes it so interesting. So there's the Kauffman Foundation. It's probably the, lead the country's leading um, source for information about entrepreneurship. And they've regularly ranked Miami number two or three or four in the country in terms of new business starts and uh, concentration of entrepreneurs, which is great. We are also, in addition to being like at the very top of the list in terms of these new business starts, we're at the very bottom of the list in terms of growth. Right, so like people start a lot of businesses and they're not yet at that point where they're going from you know very early stage entrepreneurs to like IPOs and big exits and things like that. So we're in this like transitional moment. I'm and I can say it's transitional because I'm a Miami native. I grew up here. I know what it was like in the 80s and 90s. It's extremely different now than it was then. So this is a growth area, an area that's not now Silicon Valley or even you know Boston or Austin or a place like that, but that very much has the potential to become one. And what that means for you all is that by the time you all are graduating, it's the time where you guys are gonna be starting those sort of legal infrastructure and legal services that will provide the opportunities and the, and the infrastructure for the businesses that are just getting started now, right? So the hope and expectation is among, you know, me and many other people in the Miami entrepreneurship community uh, that we're gonna move up in those rankings of growth, um, in those growth rankings, right? And stay near the top in terms of new business starts, right? So that creates the opportunity for you all to be in the very like early stage ground floor of what hopefully will be a really exciting time in, in, in this city. Um, in terms of the law school in particular, we have a ton of great resources in these areas. Um, I'll you know, mention a few faculty members who are affiliated with the concentration um, and who have a ton of expertise in this area. Professor Frumkin, who basically started the field of cyber law in the early 90s when people were like, what is an internet? Um, and is now leading the field of robot law. He does a great conference every year uh, with professors here at Stanford and a few other places. Uh, you know, basically starting this whole new field of law. Uh, I had a meeting with a student yesterday who's writing a paper on the area, thinking through how robots can form their own corporate entities. So there's a lot of like really interesting ideas that no one's thought of before and that there's an opportunity to explore here. Um, Professor Franks, who uh, runs the Cyber Civil Rights Initiative and does a lot of work with legislatures all over the country trying to fight um, revenge porn, which is, you know, as you may know, a huge problem online. Uh, and she's been extremely active and is probably the country's leading authority on that area. Uh, Professor DiStefano runs the Law Without Walls program, so this is an opportunity to basically start a legal startup while you're in law school. Uh, every year they take on a different problem and over the course of a semester with students from all over the world, so there's universities affiliated with LWOW in France, Spain, Germany, wherever, um, and you get an opportunity through that program to start your own uh, legal business. Uh, there are three required courses. One is business associations. That's the basic law of how you structure uh, corporate entities and the rights and duties of directors and investors in those corporations. The second is IP for business lawyers. That's a class that I teach and that gives you a broad overview of intellectual property law. And the last, which is sort of, you know, maybe not intuitive, is federal income tax. Some of you are like, why federal income tax? Uh, two reasons. So one, it's the introductory tax course. So to take any other tax course, you need to take federal income tax. And then as well, why take any tax courses at all? Um, some of you may have heard of a company called like Apple. Um, and you may also know that Apple right now is in the news for among other things, having you know hundreds of billions of dollars stored in offshore entities. The primary reason the money is stored in offshore entities is tax law. Right? So this is the way in which uh, Apple has decided to structure its business to minimize its tax liability. And so we have these huge public policy debates about you know, repatriating profits from overseas. That's all tax law. Right? And so this is, I think, a fundamental question because intellectual property assets are intangible. And so they lend themselves to tax minimization strategies of all kinds that you know, studying some basic tax courses is really important for people who want to be IP lawyers. So. Um, that's one reason. The other reason uh, that we have it in there is because the law school has particular expertise in the area of tax. So we have a really well-established, really, really well-respected tax program 
and we wanted to make that sort of a distinguishing feature of our concentration in the innovation and technology space. Uh, after that, we have you know a couple of tracks. One that's more geared towards startup type practices, and another one that's geared towards more sort of established technology firm type practices. And each of them have a different set of courses that emphasize different areas. But there's some overlap, and you know you can mix and match as you go. I wanted to just highlight a couple of those offerings. Um, we have some more technically oriented classes. So we have a class on big data for lawyers, intro to programming for lawyers. And the idea here is not to make you like a programmer, um, but to give you some basics so that when you have the conversations with the people at these firms who are the programmers, you can speak their language and they can speak yours. Uh, and we also have a, a, a couple of experiential opportunities that are really exciting. One is the startup practicum. And in the practicum, you basically, under the supervision of a practicing lawyer, advise very early stage startups on a range of legal issues, right? So you get your hands, you know, get your hands dirty a little bit with actual startups that we get through the community, through the university ecosystem as a whole, who need help with, you know, incorporating partnership agreements, employment agreements, some IP work. We're in the process right now of getting certified by the PTO so that you can file patents and file trademark registrations and do that kind of very early stage work for very early stage entrepreneurs. And the other is a social enterprise clinic, right? So there's a whole range of startups, particularly in Miami, that are focused on, you know, making money and doing good. So uh, this is a similar idea, right, where you take on a client and you do some work for them in those early stages of entrepreneurship. Uh, those are the basics of the built concentration. I'd be happy to answer questions.